Hey, thanks for watching Weekly Word. We appreciate each week you uh, tuning in with us and hope you find it to be a source uh, of encouragement to you and if nothing more than a spiritual thought for you to think on uh, as you go through the week. You know, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21 where John the Apostle is talking to us about uh, the glory and the splendor of heaven and the return of Christ to receive his church. And he says in one of the verses in Revelation 21, he says, on that day uh, when the Lord returns, uh, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there will be no more crying, there'll be no more pain, there'll be no more death. And then he says this, he says, and the former things of this life will have then all passed away. John is telling us about the glorious day when the Lord returns and everything that is crooked will be made straight. Everything that's wrong will be made right and he, and he will be with us and we will be with him for all of eternity. You know, having been raised in church, I can tell you that there was a time uh, in Christian life that we sang a lot more, we talked a lot more, we prayed a lot more that the Lord would come back and that he would come back soon. But I've noticed sometimes when you talk about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there are a lot of modern day Christians that sometimes go, and, and maybe you fall into this camp, that say, you know what, I, I really do want him to come back again, but, but just not right now. You see, I'm about to get married. Or my daughter's about to get married, and I, I've paid a lot of money to the caterer already. I do not want her to come back right, right, quite right now, not yet. Or somebody close to retirement. Man, I'd love to enjoy some years of retirement. We, we want them to come back maybe in theory, just not right now. Just not to come back and alter my plan, alter my schedule, alter the good times that I've got planned. Now there's another group of people sometimes that long for his return and want it to happen today. That, that's the student that's got a big test that they're not prepared for. Uh, many times in school I would pray, Lord, uh, you said you're gonna come back. Now would be a good time, rescue me from this. Or someone in deep in debt and struggling to make end meet, ends meet, oh, Lord, Lord, I, I wish you would come back now. Or somebody that's just been diagnosed or in the severe pain and discomfort of battling cancer, or some chronic pain in their life, they may long for the return of the Lord. You know, I have found that prosperity, prosperity and more control of our lives, we believe in scheduling, causes us not to long so much for the Lord to return. But what we need to remember is, the Lord returns, everything that's wrong will be made right. All the pain, all the suffering, all the difficulty of this life will come to an end. That's a day that we all ought to long for. Not after we have a few years of retirement, not after we have these plans done, because when the Lord comes back again, my friend, the best retirement you could imagine will not hold a candle to the glory of the return of the Lord. Let us be a people, no matter how prosperous we may be, to long for the Lord to come back again. And let that create in us a fire to have a desire to tell others about the Jesus that is certainly coming back again. John speaks of the return of the Lord as if it has already happened, because he's certain that it will. I pray that this encourages you and you long for his to return.